Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. What's up, everyone? What's going on, YouTube? I'm Neil Batang. I'm Rick Snorcel. And this is episode number three of Race to 100. Episode three. And today we're going to talk about something very important. We are going to discuss Black, Black Lives, Lives Matter. Matter. Man. Which, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was something that started in like 2013, right? So, I mean, it's been around for like three years, but as a white person, I, mean, it, uh, I don't really... Black Lives Matter came to fruition after, uh, after Trayvon Martin was unfortunately killed, and... Now, he, did his death happen in 2013, or was that before? It was somewhere between 2012 and 2013. Because I thought it was, like, the acquittal that was, like, the big uproar, the acquittal of Zimmerman. No, 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 that's not what it was. It wasn't even the acquittal. Black Lives Matter was going on well before the acquittal. It was because the police took their precious time to indict Zimmerman. I think someone someone tweeted it out like Black Lives Matter and it was being shared, retweeted everywhere. Yeah. You see the power of social media and once that happened, then the police decided, hey, the community has spoken about how they feel regarding this matter and we have to do something about it. And then we saw um but Zimmerman senseless got away. killing after senseless killing. Zimmerman got away though. But yeah, he was acquitted. He was acquitted. Yeah. He was acquitted. So before we open up this discussion, Ricks, tell me what Black Lives Matter means to you. I mean, so I guess Black Lives Matter first entered my radar back, um, yeah, it was back around 2013. And it was interesting because it was like, it was very similar to a movement that had gone on in seminary. Uh, it was called the Union in Praxis at, okay. when, I, when I was in New York. Okay. Um, so I was familiar with the conversation that was going on within the black community about you know, we're entering a new day and age, yeah. and it's it's a different world than mm -hmm. it was for uh, African Americans back in the 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. and even 90s. Mm -hmm. And Black Lives Matter was calling, for me anyway, like I understood it as a movement that was calling people to voice a conversation that has never, that unfortunately had never been uh, talked about in prior, gotcha. you know, gotcha. prior gotcha. conversations. Gotcha. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was a, a belated conversation gotcha. that was happening. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. To put the whole movement into more practical terms, you know, everybody's got their whole elevator pitch, like, okay, like, my friend Elliot yeah, Steele right. brought this up to me. He's like, if I'm in an elevator and someone asks me, what does Black Lives Matter mean? He's like, I'm not exactly sure what to say. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure how to respond. And I told him, in the shortest way possible. What the hell Black Lives Matter means is stop exonerating police officers that wrongfully kill black folk. Period. Yeah. Case in point, it's the most simplistic movement of all the racial movements that I've seen out there. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, people are convoluting and trying to make things more complex than they need to be. Stop finding excuses to rationalize senseless killing of black people. That's all it means. You but know? what does that look like? Because, I mean, you have a lot, you know, the conversation is like, well, there are these yeah. black kids who are getting shot, but mm -hmm. they're not exactly innocent in the whole picture as well. They're doing something wrong a lot of the times. Then you have these anomalies where police do end up killing an innocent black teen. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, for, for white people, a lot of times it's like conflating the two topics yeah, of like, exactly, you exactly. know, justifiable defense, which happens, and then also the innocent killing of black teens, which exactly. also happens. Exactly. And, 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 that, and that's what it means. So, again, for example, if when officer, someone, when officer David unfortunately kills Tyrone, and Tyrone wasn't breaking any laws, and he walks away for, with paid leave, and he's acquitted, and people say, well, he had to have been doing something, that's why they acquitted him. Yeah. No, the government effed up. That's what it means. Trayvon Martin was killed, but we want to rationalize him being wrongfully shot because he used some marijuana, or when he was 15 years old, he stole some Skittles, and he was wearing a hoodie. No, he yeah, was wrongfully right. shot. 
Laquan McDonald was walking away from a police officer and had a pocket knife. It's not illegal to own a pocket knife. He was wrongfully shot. Well, if he wouldn't have done X, Y, Z once upon a time, it wouldn't have brought him to the day where he was killed. Yeah. You've got white supremacist groups donating to the causes of these police officers that unfortunately kill these these kids, and people are looking for ways to justify it. No. You know, we don't have to look. Crime is crime. And yeah. when you're looking for an excuse to justify police wrongdoing, that's where the issue um, that's where the issue stems from. So who who can be a part of black or like who identifies as part of the Black Lives Matter movement? I mean I mean is there is there a criteria for being a part of the movement or can you Neil Batang identify as a member of the Black Lives Matter? Or I'm not, do you I'm, have to? I'm, I'm not be even part of the social. I'm, 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 not, I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not a member of the movement. I'm not like a card carrying member of the Black Lives Matter movement. Like <laughs> I'm not a card carrying member. I don't. Of I don't. I don't, I don't tweet it, but I understand it and yeah. I empathize with it, and it doesn't offend me, you know. And I see like a lot of people get offended, like that's not fair. All lives matter. That's disrespectful. Yeah, man. Reverse racism, and I'm just like, hush up, man. Listen, <laughs> it doesn't mean. And again. If we could capitalize what I'm about to say, like verbatim, it doesn't mean that all lives do not matter. That's not what we're getting at. It just means that when a black person is senselessly killed by a police officer and said black person was not breaking any laws, don't find an excuse to justify it. Please, America. It's that simple. It's not that simple, though. No, it is that simple. I don't think it's that simple. How is it not that simple? There's always circumstances that go into these events. I mean, it's hard to be able to presume the mentality and attitude of the aggressor in that situation. Which is, you know, if a police officer ends up killing a African-American teen, mm -hmm. you can say it's black and white that it's a very clear-cut case, but it never is. I mean, there's always pieces that go into how that happened. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess that's where I come down on that. I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I guess, but, but, again, that, but again, that's that's what I mean, Black Lives Matter. Because like, this is what happens, right? The Black Lives Matter movement is happening because police officers are being exonerated. They are, they are being excused for their wrongdoing. And... <laughs> And 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 <laughs> they're being excused for whatever they yeah, they did wrong, and people are, are 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 surprised and saying, you know, like you know, how is this happening? This you know, this shouldn't be happening. But you know, hey, if he walked away from it, he must have been innocent. Like Eric Garner, people are saying, like Eric Garner was killed, right? Yeah. This was a guy in New York. A police officer took him down with an illegal chokehold. Mm -hmm. He was taken down with an illegal chokehold. He broke up a fight moments before the police arrived at the scene, and he was known for selling peddling loose cigarettes, peddling cigarettes. Um, and they took him down and they choked him. And he was saying, "I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Please ease up on me." And they ended up killing him. And you know what the police and the critics say? We're trying to say that if he wouldn't have been out of shape, he wouldn't have died. Well, yeah, and, and, but and, again, and, 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 it's pointing to those individual circumstances that, yes, there are wrong doings that occur when it comes to these events, but a lot of times there are, it's, it's, it's a more complicated situation. Now, I'm, my question to you is, do you believe that the tactics of Black Lives Matter are a good way to go about getting the message across? Because what a lot of white people end up hearing is a very angry group of black people who are upset about a complicated, a lot of times complicated, murder situation. And <clears throat> when they see those angry black people, it's like they tune out. They don't actually listen to what the Black Lives Matter movement is saying. And it doesn't seem like the Black Lives Matter movement is too concerned about being able to communicate to white people. They're on their own. They're on their own. No, no, no. They wavelength. are. No, they are. They are trying to communicate. On the contrary, they are absolutely trying to communicate their message to pe people in the most peaceful and practical way possible. But people are 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 are, are, are shutting them out. I mean, and it doesn't mean that you know they're not pointing the finger and saying it's your fault, Rick Thorsell. 
you know, as a white person, that yeah. Eric no one's ever saying that to you. That 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 doesn't make sense. That's not even true. But they're just saying, open your eyes, open your mind, open your heart, and listen. See what the hell is happening, you know, in your community. That could have been your kid. Yeah. That could have been your kid. That could have been your kid. But you white know? people don't have that experience. I mean, for for white people to to be concerned about a police officer killing their child is almost a non-issue for most whites. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't really understand what that means when you say it. That could be your kid. Well, that doesn't really resonate with white people. So, yeah, so that's why I go back to my original argument. Stop ex exonerating police officers that wrongfully kill black folk. <laughs> That's that's all. It, that's all it is. If there, if, if 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 it was merited, if it was in self defense or fear for safety, and you look at the evidence and it's there, okay, that's one thing. But if the evidence isn't there, why are these guys these guys still getting acquitted? You tell me. I I, I don't know. I'm not in law enforcement. I'm not in the. I'm not a part of the government. But I know when there's an evidence and lack thereof, and when there is a lack thereof of evidence to show that said person who was killed was in fact endangering the police officer who killed him, and somehow this guy walks away with it, with a job, maybe even a raise, yeah, that's effed up, period. And stuff's got to change. And that's why we say Black Lives Matter. So, anything else you want to touch base on regarding this topic, Rick Storcell? Well, I mean, this is going to be a conversation that's ongoing. I'm sure we're going to be talking about this a couple of times. Oh, yeah, there'll, times be, a, there'll be a Black Lives Matter 2, 3, 4, 5, as, you, know, you know, as we get more information on this and we, we get more experience with the the nuances and complexities and how it's evolving too. I yeah. mean, it's three years in right now and yeah. who knows what it's going to look like tomorrow or the next month or whatever. So for you guys out there and girls, uh, if you want to leave your comments about what you think Black Lives Matter, we would love to hear that. Uh, please feel free to, you know, give us your opinion whether you're black or white. I think this is part of the ongoing conversation that we're trying to have. So with that, so ends another episode of Race to 100, and we'll catch you next time.